Hi everybody, today we're working on a 2007 Acura MDX. We're just doing the front brakes. We'll be replacing the pads and the rotors. So pads and rotors are pretty easy to do. Um, this shouldn't take more than an hour or two. And uh, the procedure I'll be following here is pretty much the same on just about any car with disc brakes on the front wheels. So it should work for any other Hondas, Acuras, or pretty much anything out there. It will jack the car first, and on this MDX, which is the same for 2007 through 2013, I found it's easiest to uh, jack under the subframe um, cross members here. So I put the jack right, right where the control arm goes into the subframe. And I put the jack stand, jack stand itself on the body side rail here. I'm using an impact gun to remove the wheel lugs here. If you don't have air tools, you'll want to crack these just loose a little bit while the wheel is still touching the ground. You don't want to loosen it up all the way, just enough so that you can loosen them when the wheel is up in the air. The front brakes on this car are actually not that old, not that worn, but I'm changing them because it's developed a front end vibration due to some uneven wear. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the rotors and pads. All right, one thing I like to use when working on brakes, I've got this stadium seat cushion thing here. I bought at a sports store nearby. I use this to as a knee pad so I'm not trying to kneel down onto a hard floor. Okay, we've got the wheel off here. So what we'll need to do is um, remove the caliper here so we can get the rotor off. There's two 19 millimeter bolts here and here attaching to the uh, caliper onto the hub here. Once we remove those bolts, the whole caliper will come out of the way. <clears throat> but before doing that, we should pry the, the uh, piston back into the caliper while the caliper is still attached to the hub. To do that, we just use a big uh, screwdriver and, and kind of push, push and force the fluid back up into the uh, reservoir. So of course, the way the brake works is uh, when the cal caliper piston comes out, it forces this part to go that way and this part to go this way to squeeze onto the rotor so we just need to kind of reverse that so find a suitable place to pry and you can see the movement already and that way when we go to put the new new brakes on Uh, they'll, they'll slide right on. And you can see it's nice and loose now. Now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and loosen these two 19 millimeter. And they're going to be on there really tight, so I'm using a breaker bar. Okay, so we got these bolts out. And we'll go ahead and uh, just put the caliper up out of the way. Just someplace where it won't fall over. Now we need to get these set screws out. And these can be pretty tight. Don't try to turn them without using percussive action first. So you can take a screwdriver and um, hit it on the head here to kind of kind of break it free. What I like to do is use a small 3 8 inch, well actually a quarter inch uh, impact gun and the hammering action breaks this free pretty good each time. So you want to push real hard to make sure it doesn't slip and it comes right out.
if there's a lot of corrosion, you may want to put some uh, penetrating oil in that first and let it sit for a while. So now we can just hit with a hammer, break it free, and the rotor comes right off. Next we'll get the old pads out of the caliper, and to do this you just kind of push them with your thumb, and they come right out. So I got some brand new rotors, and considering the warpage and the uneven wear issues that you might have, and the cost of rotors, I, I don't really recommend machining them. I think in most cases you're going to have less trouble by just buying new rotors. This is covered with a special oil to prevent it from rusting during shipment. You want to use some brake part cleaner to get all that off before installing. No need to wipe it down, it'll just run off. Avoid touching the, the surface while you reinstall this. And make sure to line up with the set screw holes. These don't need to be super tight. Save yourself grief next time and just uh, just a little bit tight is good enough. Next we'll install the new pads. This kit's coming with some uh, anti-noise uh, shims as well. As well as some grease for the, uh, for the parts that are coming into contact. So the way this works for this car is the uh, coated pad goes underneath and then the metal pad goes on top. And the coating kind of absorbs the vibration so you don't get brake squeal. So we'll assemble like that for each of the each of the pads. Next, we'll just put a little bit of this goo onto the moving surf moving parts. Kind of this is kind of like an anti seize. I'll put a little on the back here as well, although I don't think that's necessary. Now we slide the pad back into the caliper. and then put it back over the rotor. I'm using an air tool here for speed. Whether you use an air tool or a hand tool, be sure that both these bolts are tight. Okay, so that's it for this side. Once you've done that, make sure to go inside the car and pump the brake pedal a few times before attempting to drive it. Otherwise, you may be surprised at the lack of brake when you first try to move the car. So that's pretty much it. Put the wheel back on and repeat on the other side. If you strip the head of the rotor set screws, you can just drill them out and replace with another screw. In a pinch, you can even go without. Their only function is to keep the rotor from flopping around when you have the wheel off. The wheel is what really holds the rotor in place. After a new brake and rotor installation, it's recommended to bed the brakes. Find a section of road where you can get the car up to speed and accelerate up to about 60 miles per hour, then quickly decelerate to about 20 miles per hour. Repeat this about 10 times. This will ensure a good consistent layer of pad material is transferred to the rotor surface, which is important for best braking performance and even more.